Like many places in Maine, Wells Reserve is off the beaten path, a place to enjoy Mother Nature and, as we discovered, a center of lobster innovation. I found a way to get paid to go play outside and pet the wildlife and learn about the natural world. It's about the best thing ever. Dr. Ben Gutzler, a.k.a. the gizmo expert, says he was called to study lobster at an early age. Boat was, I believe, the fifth word I learned, and I couldn't say lobster at the time, so I just made a claw gesture. Now that is a respectable foundation for some interesting research. This area in particular funded by the University of Maine Lobster Institute. This is one of the sea hats in practice, so it has the infrared device looking through the, the carapace here to look at the heart rate. We've also got a light sensor, temperature sensor. We've got a little magnet glued to the mandible, so when she chews, we're able to record how often she's eating. Scientists are trying to answer that question, and others, in an effort to keep the lobster population thriving, no matter the conditions. If you can figure out ways to improve the quality of the product or the number of lobsters that make it all the way through the supply chain to an end consumer, that's more dollars in pockets for people all the way from the boat docks to the processing plants. The community of lobster biologists is relatively small, about 200 around the world, all working to figure things out beyond the trap. This is the guts of what we're calling the mock lobster, which is basically an instrumentation package that can go in a lobster trap and be treated as a lobster so it gets hauled onto the boat, put in the holding tank, put in the crate, transported all the way through the shipping. You can see it tail flipping. Gutzler says despite 100 years of research, we still have a long way to go. People have been working on this since 1895, and we still don't necessarily understand a lot of just the basics about like what they actually do all day. It's not just research improving the future of the lobster fishery and the lobstering industry. Processing is making strides in both access and sustainability. We buy lobster directly from fishermen at the docks. We bring it into our own production facility. We cook it, pick it, pack it, and we ship lobster products all over. Ben Conniff is co-founder of Luke's Lobster. He and his partner own 19 restaurants in the U.S., one in Japan and one in Singapore all serving Maine Lobster. Processing is actually a really great way to lock in that sweet, beautiful flavor. 70% of the lobster caught in Maine actually goes to processors. It isn't sold live. So if we didn't have processors to turn that lobster into really high quality value added products, there wouldn't be a market for more than half of that lobster and we wouldn't be supporting as many fishermen as we are. Five million pounds a year go through just this one facility in Saco, Maine, but they're not just focused on the dinner table. We take an antenna to tail approach to our lobster. We wanna make sure that we derive value from every piece and we waste nothing. Not only the edible parts, but even the hemolymph can be used in skincare products. You heard that right. This doesn't look much like lobster, but the building blocks of marin lotion are very much tied to the crustacean. It's the brainchild of Amber Boudiette and Patrick Breeding. We work with lobster scientists who are interested in a protein that helps lobsters literally pop off their own claws and regenerate them. And so some of the science said that the same way that the protein could help regenerate claws, it might actually be able to help repair the skin barrier. Test subject number one, Amber herself. Most of my adult life I had had eczema, and around that time I was experiencing some of the most severe flares that I had ever had. So we took a chance and tried it on my skin, and we formulated our first prototype of the product with these proteins. And within about two days of using it on my face, my flares started to clear up. So they wrote grant proposals and turned their kitchen into a lab. The first prototype we formulated actually in a kitchen. So we, we used our science <laughs> degrees in some ways there. That was in the summer of 2017. They now work with Luke's Lobster to extract the protein and say they don't add much more. The glycoproteins from lobster are actually just a waste byproduct. This circulatory fluid that the lobsters have is just going down the drain, literally just going down the drain. And in that fluid is the protein that we use. Taking something from the ocean, we should probably use everything. And if you can, improve people's quality of life. 
wow. Mm. Uh, that was impressive. <laughs> yeah. Mar and Lotion, their sales are so strong, they're moving to a bigger warehouse because they're going to have a big increase in production now. Wow, and it's not just lotion. Actually, lobster shells are a great source of calcium being used as plant fertilizer. And some scientists are actually testing uh, the scraps of lobster used from food processing plants to use as a possible disinfectant. So, mm. yeah, it's... Boy, we're using, we're using all of it. Uh, they're using all of that whole lobster. <laughs> Up next, Beyond the Boiled Lobster.